Hi, I'm Glenn Canning, and for the News Photographers Association of Canada, this is a gear blog entry. I'm going to be doing a review of the Canon HF200. This is the same camera as the HF20, except the 20 has an internal hard drive, and this one does not. The 20 also costs you about $200 more, and this is silver, it's black. Now, the review I'm doing on this camera really is a review for a photojournalist. I'm not going to go in-depth with all the technical information. You can get all that from Canon's website. I just want to give you some information on my experience with it. So you can make an informed decision yourself if this is something you're going to want to pick up for your gear bag. The first thing I notice about this camera is its size. This is extremely small. It weighs about 14 ounces. It's 2.8 by 2.4 by almost 5 inches long. It's perfect for fitting in a camera bag. You won't even notice you have it around until you need it. So I'll do a comparison. This is the HV20. So once you remove a tape, and the tape mechanism from the camera, you can really see the difference in size. This shoots just the SD card. This is, of course, mini DV. Camera speed turn on. This camera turns on very, very quickly, and it's good to go in a matter of second. Two different settings for the menus. Um, one of them is a deeper menu where you're going right inside the camera, and there you're going to be, of course, finding out your image effects, the quality, the quality of the pictures you can get out of the camera, and you have your deeper menu, of course, with your frame rate, your digital zoom speed, autofocus functions, everything like that. You also have a toggle button here. Now the toggle button brings up a handy menu that is very quick access stuff like your video light. Uh, it also has on here your digital or your pre-record. I'll go over that in a second. It has the sunlight, it has exposure, focus, mic level, face detection system. I'll go over that as well. The toggle menu is very handy. You'll really like having it in the camera. It's all your good settings are right there, easy to get at. As far as the photo function goes, the photos are probably what you'd expect from something like this. They're point and shoot quality. It's not something that's even close to being compared to a digital SLR, so I'd take that as you want to use it. The camera, one of the things you notice between it and the HV20, the HV20 has the viewfinder in the back. This one doesn't. Uh, it would be handy because you can record and you can also be recording with this closed. Now the camera has the hot shoe on the top here, so what you're going to need to remember about that is it's not a normal size hot shoe. This is actually called an advanced shoe, a mini advanced shoe. It won't fit any kind of aftermarket microphone you're going to get on there, so you're going to have to come up with some kind of a bracket or a system where you can use different audio with this. Cord buttons right here in the back power buttons here on the top. This is your zoom button. They're all very, very handy for where your hand is. It's great stuff, actually. It's very well thought out. Your battery's easy to get at. It comes off very easily. It gives you about an hour and a half of power. There's three modes for this camera. There's photo mode for just taking pictures only. There's video mode for just picture only or, fo or video only. And then there's your combination of both. When you use a combination of both, you lose a lot of the functions in your menu. You lose all your manual functions. So you might want to just keep it on video and go with that. If you're really desperate to get a picture off of it, you can play it back later on and then just do a screen capture by hitting your photo button. Now the HV200 uses the SD cards. The door is in here. It's very easy to access it. It uh, works very well, even with my big fingers. You have your headphone jack in here, which is a different kind of place for it. Because if you have your headphone in here, then you can't close the door. It's, it's just something that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, in the back here, of course, you have your microphone jack, which is great. And your at, at USB card thing, your HDMI inputs are all in here too as well. This cam port has a tremendous amount of manual control. You can set your shutter speed between 1 8th and 1 2 ,000th of a second. Set your aperture between 1.8 and 8. Uh, one thing I did find wrong with this camera when I went to shoot in certain settings uh, with the sun up over here about 10 in the morning, long distance shots, I was up on a, a, a very big uh, cliff almost, and I couldn't get this camera to focus during zoom at all. Even when I zoom all the way in, it's out of focus, I start zooming back, it was just hunting everywhere and it couldn't maintain any kind of focus whatsoever under those situations. I couldn't repeat that again, um, it was just during that scene. It was kind of strange and I don't know why it did it. It might just been this camera or it might be something Canon needs to have a look at. I went before I bought this and I looked at a few YouTube videos where people were complaining that the camera isn't do a very good job at nighttime. Um, I th would probably say with a good amount of certainty that those people, chances are, they kept it on auto 
and they left it on auto. They didn't play around with the settings at all or dig into their menu. If they had done that, they would see a few simple switches, set it to cinema mode, set it to 24p, and your nighttime video with this camera is actually surprisingly very sharp. Uh, it was substantially better than the HV20. So I did a lot of playing around with it in different circumstances. Uh, had it outdoors, different lighting situations. Um, stuck it on the, stuck it in my car, and generally speaking, the the video I found out of this camera to be very sharp, very well focused, and the colors were great. Now there's one thing in here that I mentioned, that is a three second pre-record. That is an absolutely great feature for having a camera like this. If you're out at a football game. A uh, sporting event or even a news thing where you know something's going to happen and you're just waiting for it You can hit the three second pre-record on this and the camera will cycle through three seconds So it's not actually recording it, but when you hit the record button it goes back three seconds So for that one play in the football game instead of recording the whole thing hoping you're going to get your good shots You can just follow along and when something really great happens hit record and you've got it That's a super feature for a photojournalist to have in a camera like this seeing as this is a review of a camcorder. The one I'm looking at here now is the Canon XHA1. This is the HF200. Same situation, same lighting, so you can see exactly what you're going to get. Now, something else about this camera that I mentioned is called face detection. Now, if you're doing an interview with someone and you're out on the street, or it happens to be a person who moves around a lot and they get all kinds of different settings, different situations going on, the lighting's different around them. You can run into a problem where your camcorder is going to start hunting for something to focus on and you're going to lose your shots. But with this one here, it has a little box that will actually follow you around in the menu and it keeps your face in focus. That's one more thing I like to talk about is the onboard audio. Hi, I'm Mike Canning and this is my review of the Canon HF200. HF200 uh, is the same camera as the HF20, except the HF20 has an internal hard drive. Can you point to the map where we are? We're right here in the center. So, if you're going to use this camcorder to do your stuff, you're going to need some kind of audio system to back it up with. So, all that said, from my experience working with this camera for the last month or so, I would certainly recommend it to someone in the photojournalism field who needs a handy camcorder to throw in their bag. It doesn't replace anything higher end, but it does a great job and I do believe you'll be probably surprised at the quality that comes out of it. Uh, I found the video was sharp, I found it was colorful, I found the autofocus system worked great. With the exception of the focus problem I had under that one situation, I haven't had a problem with this camera at all. For the News Photographers Association of Canada, I'm Glenn Canning, that's been my gear blog review. Thanks, have a great day.